So next up is an exciting part of the evening. We have the, the we have one of the two winners of the amusing song competition here. We have a video of the first place winner and we're gonna have a live performance by the second place finisher in this national competition to write a song that's related to statistics. So let me ask Parker Kane to, to come on up. Parker just graduated within the last week from Northern Kentucky University. How many days ago did you graduate, Parker? Like five. Like five days ago, Parker graduated. And he's already got a job lined up. He's got, I think he told me, seven weeks to, to prepare for the job. And I've got a file with background music I need to get ready. <laughs> yes. All right, hello everyone. The photographer is here, right? Yeah, the cause photographer is here. Well, I've already handed off my, my phone for video, so my chair can let right. me never live this down. Right, right. But, um, so what you're about to hear is a song called Confidence. Uh, it's about confidence intervals. I actually created, it started as a joke and then ended up as much more than that, as a six-song EP called The P-Series, created by my rapper alter ego Lil P-Value. Um, so if you go to soundcloud.com and search LIL space P value, you can find the P series there, all the lyrics and everything. But for the time being, here is uh, confidence. The lyrics are in the little program too. It's your boy Lil P value. Today, we're going to be talking a little something about confidence intervals. Let's go. Hey. Confidence, confidence, know what is common, common sense, sense. Any good estimate, estimate gotta have consequence yeah, Unless your sample is big as the popular Start name, with ideas and then test the hypothesis rule sure. Trying to get a better idea of you That's the situation we gon' pursue Take a sample, that's the first thing to do Now we got inside, we're gonna accrue We could also guess it peak Population proportion, I mean Categorical data we need But the processes, they all agree Now we gotta center, and we gotta formulate Margin of error, no we gotta calculate So we take a deviation and a sample size And we put the two together and we multiply it by R Confidence, yeah. confidence, 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 confidence. Now backed up by stats called that data incompetence. Way we do math, you know we got confidence. Confidence, confidence, confidence. There's a second chorus, we're all gonna do this together next time. So just be ready for that. Confidence, 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 confidence. Now backed up by stats called that data incompetence. Go. To make a point, you gotta get a point. Yeah, we got the error, now we case the joint. 99, maybe 95 percent confidence, we gotta decide. Get associated Z score, multiply it by error to be sure. Points a day to need context, or else I'll be looking like Eeyore. Take the point, and we add subtract the error. Got two bounds, one's the greater, one's the lesser. What's the story though, the point of this endeavor? We need some context, it'll make the insights better. Confidence, knowledge is bottomless, stats is the answer to relevant problems. Hunches are all keep those up in sarcophagus. Data is filling up all business documents. Got it? Good. Got two points and it's understood. Given many samples at the margin, would capture the parameter, the likelihood is all based off of our confidence, confidence, confidence. Yeah, everyone, yeah. Confidence, 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 confidence. Yeah. Yeah. Now backed up by stats called that data incompetence. Yeah. Why we do math, yeah. you know yeah. we got yeah. confidence. Yeah. Confidence. Yeah. Confidence. Yeah. Confidence. Yeah. Confidence. Confidence. Hey. 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 Confidence. Now backed up by stats called that data incompetence. incompetence. Yeah, let's go. This ain't 101, man, I sleep on Z's, but I'll drive from a T-test, put it on the green. I mean, I wanna say I'm above the mean. I'm not standard, deviation's way past three. No one not normal when it comes to clout. It's Kai, not shy. If you ever in doubt, I'm an outlier, but you can't take me out. Okay, okay, yeah. You're never gonna see me in the back of a class. I attack a mathematical model. You better be accurate. When it comes to stacking knowledge, I'm a chronic insomnia. Give me a tiny sample and bootstrap it in the window. Data messy, I'm a janitor. Programming up an R until I estimate parameters. The Cadley, I'm a mammoth fingers agile. You can call me project manager. Statistic less for every day upon the calendar. Yeah, I've been feeling like a challenger. Your confidence is low. Looking more like mob. But when the dice start to roll, no, I'm estimating randomness. Shout out the new one. The dudes inventing calculus. My values are critical. Twins, Zachary Nickerman, and like an inequality. The rapper is equivalent. I'm like a global maximum, but my bounds are infinite. Par key P value, my flow significant. Thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations. <laughs> hmm. 
That was great. <laughs> so next up we have a video from the first place winner in this contest whose name is Greg Crowther who teaches biology at Everett Community College near, near Seattle, who wasn't able to be with us, but he did send a video, and he got some friends of his to put together the video. The names of the musicians will appear at the, at the, end, of the, at the end of the video. And Greg says that, that his uh, songwriting was inspired by a blog entry from Thomas Lumley at the University of Auckland. So let me try to get the video ready to go here. It's called Trials and Errors. Lyrics are in the program. Lyrics are in the program. Now you're seeing it, let's start over. One, two. Source. It said my lifespan would probably rise if I would choose to buy a horse. I guess the author was mistaken. And then I got to the final lines which said this is no mere correlation. The research study was double blind. A double blind study of horse ownership and a double blind study of horse ownership. Is it for real or is it a quick? It's a double blind study of horse ownership. study seeking volunteers. The topic didn't seem half bad, teen behavior and drinking beer, but it said that there would be two groups, the drinking and not drinking juveniles, and the researchers would assign the youths in the manner of a randomized trial. A randomized trial of underage drinking, a randomized trial of underage drinking. Who's in charge and what are they thinking? It's a randomized trial of underage drinking. Well, the second study seemed so suspect, I called the number in the ad and I said, I can't be one of your subjects, but can I share some concerns I had? The guy in charge said, never fear, rigor is our research credo. The group that doesn't receive the beer will drink tap water as a placebo. Placebo controls of plain tap water. Placebo controls of plain tap water. If that's what they're doing, why even bother? The placebo controls of plain tap water. And if you're looking for a moral here, the lesson learned is not a hard one. Regardless of a study's slick veneer, were great congratulations congratulations yeah congratulations to both winners those were terrific so back to powerpoint what do we have next i kind of forget what we have next let's find out let's present the cause lifetime achievement award and first let me give you a little bit of history let me remind you of the previous winners of this award starting in 2005 with george Comp. Followed in 2007 by Joan Garfield. Followed in 2009 by Roxy Peck, who's at the front table here. 2011, the awardee was Dick Schaefer. 2013, from this very room, we had Chris Franklin, not in this I got confused. Chris Franklin in 2013. 2015, the first time here, was Ann Watkins and Mike Shaughnessy. And then 2017, just two years ago, was Danny Kaplan, who's in the room somewhere. So who will the 2019 awardees be? We actually have two awardees to honor this evening. 
The first awardee is a friend of many of ours, and this award is actually made posthumously to Tom Short, who, who died unexpectedly last fall. So let me tell you a little about Tom, for those of you that don't know Tom. Tom had a distinguished academic career at many institutions, all in Ohio and Pennsylvania, where we are today. Tom was an undergraduate at John Carroll University, and then went on to graduate studies at Carnegie Mellon in Pittsburgh, where Tom and I were classmates, by the way. Tom started his academic career at Villanova University in Philadelphia and earned tenure there. Decided to move to Western Pennsylvania and, and also earned tenure at Indiana University of Pennsylvania. And then got the opportunity to return to his alma mater and went back to John Carroll as a faculty member and earned tenure there as well. Earned tenure in three different institutions and then went to Westchester University back near Philadelphia where his academic career began. Tom was very active and very distinguished, very accomplished in many areas of statistics education and many aspects of our field. Let me mention a couple of things from his resume now. One thing is, I believe I'm correct in saying he's the only person who's been the editor of the two major journals in our field, the Journal of Statistics Education and the Statistics Education Research Journal. Tom was also very, very active in the American Statistical Association. As Ron and others can attest, Tom was a member of the ASA Board of Directors. He was a member of the governing board of both the Council of Sections and the Council of Chapters in the ASA. Tom was also very involved in CAUSE, the organization that puts on U.S. cuts. One example of that is he served as the Associate Director for Professional Development of this organization. Tom was also active in other ways. He was a science fair leader. He was the ASA representative to the International Science Fair and really delighted not just in helping with the judging, but in giving presentations for the students there about how to better incorporate experimental design and data analysis into their science projects. Tom was a workshop presenter with me many times and some of you many times. Teacher networker is how I would describe another activity that Tom was very involved with and very good at. He got teachers together. In Philadelphia, he helped organize the PASTA group, which continues to meet to this day. He was also involved in Cleveland with a local group of, of teachers that gets together and shares ideas. And Tom was also a textbook author, and here's a photo of Tom with his textbook. Let me mention two things about Tom that I think were particularly uncanny. Tom had an extraordinary ability to share his enthusiasm for statistics and to convey statistical ideas at all levels. And I truly mean all levels there, at the K through 12 level, at the level of AP statistics, at the introductory college level, at the advanced undergraduate level, and with graduate students as well. One quick anecdote, Tom and I once went to the PCTM conference, Pennsylvania Council of Teachers of Mathematics, and he drove me there, and when I got in the car, I found he had about 30 teddy bears stuffed into the back seat. Why did he have 30 teddy bears to go to a conference of math teachers? Well, his presentation was for elementary school teachers, and he used the teddy bears to illustrate variability in classification. And he had the teachers classifying the bears by size and by color and by whether they had eyes or not and all kinds of things. I, I had the privilege of being there. It was just terrific. The other thing that, that Tom had an uncanny ability for, and those of you who knew him will attest to this, and that is to spread fun and humor and joy to colleagues and students that he encountered from coast to coast. So here's some photos of Tom that try to capture some of that, that fun and joy. One with Roxy, his textbook co-author. And let me, if you'll indulge me for just a minute, I'd like to tell you a little bit about my relationship with Tom. Tom and I, as I say, go back to graduate school in the 1980s at Carnegie Mellon in Pittsburgh. We attended graduate school together. We embarked on careers as statistics teachers together. It wasn't all that common at the time for, for people graduating from CMU to focus on careers dedicated to statistics teaching, but that's what both Tom and I were interested in. We collaborated on some education projects over the years. We often roomed together at conferences, which you can imagine if you knew Tom was a lot of fun. We took walks around the cities that the conferences were. My first national conference was in San Francisco at the joint math meetings in 1991, and Tom was my roommate. It's the first time I had been in California as an adult, 
And those of you that have been to San Francisco know it's a beautiful town. It's a very difficult town to walk around, but we really enjoyed walking up and down the, the, the hills of San Francisco and seeing the beautiful sights. And then later in our careers, we got to be in Daytona Beach for an AP statistics reading or two actually. And every morning pretty much we took a walk on the beach before going off to work. And that was a lot of fun also. And it was a lot of fun because what we did during those walks was talk about statistics education. And we exchanged advice about career and work and life to some extent as well. And last but certainly not least, Tom and I really enjoyed participating in fantasy sports. Tom's team had a terrific name for a statistician's fantasy baseball team. His team was the Markov Fielders. <laughs> so there's some photos of, of Tom and me. Dennis showed me the one in the bottom left just a day or two ago, which apparently was taken when the cause charter was signed to establish the organization that runs U.S. COTS. So thank you for, for indulging my personal reminiscences, reminiscences there. But I'm very, uh, very happy to award Tom with the Cause Lifetime Achievement Award. And I'm especially pleased that Tom's son, Bob, has agreed to come today to receive the award. Bob has a PhD in mathematics himself in applied algebraic topology. I had to confess to him this evening, I didn't know that algebraic topology had applications. <laughs> but it does, and Bob would be happy to, to talk with you about them. Bob is a faculty member at John Carroll University, which is his alma mater and his father's alma mater. So let me, uh, let me ask Bob to come up, and Dennis Pearl will present the award. Thanks for coming. Very nice you to come. Second award will be announced by Dennis. Yeah, I wanted to say a few words about ordering the statue, ordering the, uh, the little award here. So, because it has a kind of a statistical point. So I, I call up uh, Capital Awards, uh, and got a, a young woman on the phone. And, uh, you know, this could sound a little strange, but every two years I order this uh, nice acrylic statue with a wooden base and a clock inside. And you have our, our logo on file. This is Dennis Pearl from Penn State University. He says, yes, I've got that, and you get a, an educational discount of 10%. Well, that's nice. I'm, this year, I'm going to order uh, two awards. And she says, oh, well, if you order two awards, you're going to go over $100, and you can use our uh, web coupon and get 20% off. Well, that's, that's really nice. I, just to be curious, what if I ordered three? And she says, well, for three, you get our quantity discount of 30%. <laughs> so I said, well, let's see. So if I order one, I get 10% off. If I order two, I get 20% off. If I order three, I get 30% off. So I see where this is going. <laughs> I'll take 10. <laughs> so, I mean... It's funny, right? So, <laughs> so I thought it was a really good line, but uh, on the other end of the phone, dead silence. <laughs> I'm thinking, you know, this just went over, over her head, you know? And so I'm sitting there, you know, la lamenting the poor status of, of quantitative literacy in the United States. And, and I say, well, you know, I've... I've got to ask, I thought that was pretty funny. You know, did, didn't you understand my joke? And she said, no, I understood your joke. And I, actually, I was just sitting here lamenting the poor state of quantitative literacy in the United States. I mean, what kind of country do we live in 
when even a professor <laughs> doesn't realize that you should not use linear regression <laughs> to extrapolate beyond the range of your data. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think the, the moral, right, is, is that, is that you, know, you ask questions in class and don't assume that silence means ignorance. <laughs> Like Rob was saying, you really, if you, challenge, uh, if you challenge your students, they'll come through and actually surprise you in, in lots of ways. So uh, this year's uh, USCOT's Cause Lifetime Achievement Award goes to somebody whose motto is just doing that. This year's winner is Rob Gould. You have to hold on a little bit. We have a people, people introducing you. Hold on. Oh. <laughs> so, to, to, introduce, to introduce Rob, do you want to? Uh, as introductory talks, we have um, uh, Mina Setengai Rundle coming from Scotland. Congratulations on a much deserved award, Rob. I imagine just about everyone in the audience is familiar with Rob's work as his impact has been incredibly broad from high school to community colleges to undergraduate to the larger international statistics and data science communities. Rob's contribution to statistics education is so profound that I'm not even sure where to start uh, summarizing it. For the last nine years, I've been working with Rob most closely on DataFest, so I'll start there. DataFest started in 2011, at my last year as a graduate student at UCLA. When Rob first mentioned it, I remember thinking, this sounds awesome, but will students actually show up? Well, as many of you probably already know, they did show up, and they keep showing up year after year. To say that DataFest has turned into an international phenomenon would be a huge understatement. DataFest 2019 season just wrapped up, and the event took place in over 40 locations with participation from almost 3,000 students. And this expansion of the program did not happen by chance. Year in and year out, Rob works tirelessly to curate and prepare interesting data sets and challenges and to support organizers. In fact, he's already working on DataFest 2020. You should ask him about it. It's been a true pleasure and privilege working with Rob on organizing DataFest each year despite its ups and downs. The hard questions Rob asks along the way to the data providers and the outreach and support to local organizers and the precise balance he manages to strike between just rolling with what we have and pushing for more data is what makes the event such a huge success year after year. Each year I feel like I learned so much from Rob and you know you're with a good educator when you learn things from them even when they aren't trying to teach you. There's so much more to say about Rob's impact on statistics education beyond DataFest, though. There's gays, and TICE, and Matic, and TYCDSS, and Surge, and ICOTS, and IDSSP, you name an acronym related to stats education, and Rob's been involved. And likely not just involved, but led and organized and wrote a report and shared it with the rest of us to learn from and build on. But there's one more acronym that comes to my mind when I think of Rob, and that's UCLA. In addition to shaping and continuously innovating in the undergraduate curriculum at UCLA, Rob's work and mentorship has had an incredibly meaningful and lasting effect on the graduate students at UCLA. He has inspired many of us to pursue careers in statistics education. His careful but adventurous style for putting into practice the best and newest in statistics education rubs off onto graduate students in the best way possible. And I think the effects of this can be seen years down the line in his mentees' teaching and research. I know the name of this award is the Lifetime Achievement Award, Rob, but I imagine you have another lifetime of achievements ahead of you. I'm so lucky that our paths have crossed and lucky to be able to call you a friend, a colleague, a mentor. I'm looking forward to another fancy dinner at an exotic conference location. I'm sorry I couldn't be there to celebrate with you, but I hope you'll appreciate the Scottish delicacy I sent along. And don't worry, it's not haggis. But more importantly, there's a lovely tribute book waiting for you as well. Huge thanks to everyone who have contributed to it and to Dennis for kindly offering to put it together. Congratulations again, Rob. 
and I hope you're wearing one of your good shirts for the surprise award photo. <laughs> We have one more speaker to talk about Rob's contributions, Andy Ziffler. Now I am nervous. <laughs> <laughs> you, you think <coughs> Alan gave you a short time span. I mean, but I did put on a good t-shirt for you, so. It is um, my distinct privilege and honor to say a few words about Rob Gould, the recipient of this year's Cause Lifetime Achievement Award. It's been nearly 15 years since I made, first made Rob's acquaintance. I was, back then, I was in the final stages of my PhD program. And at the time, working as a research assistant on one of Joan Garfield's many NSF-funded projects. Rob was an advisor on the grant. And, and while I don't recall having dinner with Rob on this grant, we very well might have. Having, uh, knowing Rob and Joan, the probability of that is asymptotic to one. I've shared many wonderful and expensive meals with Rob over the years, and to that end, I would like to introduce the Gould number. Oh. Similar to the Erdős number, which describes the collaborative distance between Hungarian mathematician Paul Erdős and another person as measured by authorship of mathematical papers, I propose that the Gould number describes the gourmandization distance between Rob and any other statistics educator as measured by shared dining experiences. <laughs> For example, my Gould number is one since I have broken bread with Rob, when my current graduate student's Gould number would be two as they have eaten a meal with me, and I have eaten a meal with Rob. <clears throat> Think of it like a Kevin Bacon number, emphasis on bacon, or in Rob's case, <laughs> truffled bacon and camembert. <laughs> Food aside, it's hard to put in words how much Rob's engagement and work has meant to the statistics education community. Among the many contributions to statistics education that Rob can claim, one that stands out is founding the journal Technology Innovations in St Statistics Education, or TIES. Established in 2006, TIES is one of the flagship statistics education research journals. Its inaugural issue in 2007 set the stage for the journal and included several articles that are still cited in research to this day, including the article by George Cobb that ignited the resampling revolution for teaching statistical inference. Since its inception, TIES has published 67 articles. Uh, it's hard to quantify the reach of TIES um, to the broader community, but to give a sense, in the last four months of 2018, the number of total requests for TIES articles, including views and downloads, exceeded 6,000. In addition, the articles, which in, uh, in include position papers, empirical studies, and te technological innovations are now commonly cited in much of the current statistics education scholarship. The amazing thing about Ties is that Rob has been the, the editor since its origin. Think about editing a journal for that long. Uh, and this means that it's primarily been Rob who has carried the brunt of the workload from finding reviewers to working with authors and editing and formatting articles to promoting the journal at conferences. It was only after six years of this in 2012 that I came on board to help ease Rob's workload with the journal. In some, I think I speak for many when I say it has been a privilege to work with and learn from you. Your creativity, knowledge, optimism, and warmth have inspired the way in which many of us think about and teach statistics. As a statistics educator, you are a role model par excellence, and it has been my extreme good fortune to call you both colleague and friend. Congratulations, Rob. So uh, for the award, we have the inscription. Now you're ready to come up. <laughs> All right. Uh, the inscription reads, um, for timeless and continuing contributions to the improvement of statistics, statistics education. The word clock. We have a tribute book with uh, tributes to Rob from dozens of uh, statistics educators that uh, really value his efforts and the Scottish surprise that Mina I hope it's what I promised. Think it is. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> if you want to say a few words? I'm at a loss. <laughs> uh, well, uh, thanks. Um, I probably can't take this on the airplane, so <laughs> yeah, we'll just sit over there in the corner until uh, <laughs> the, the night grows young. <laughs> Um, I'm really touched. I'm honored. Um, I do need data for 2020 Data Fest, so if you've got ideas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
and it has been a long time editing that journal, and so if someone wants to take it over, please <laughs> let me know. Um, well, thank you all, because it means a lot to me, and you all mean a lot to me. Thanks very much.